Welcome or welcome back to my channel. As you all have seen from the thumbnail, I'll be using multiple foam boards and I'm using this styrofoam piece to trace my lines. I'm using my silver Sharpie to trace the lines and my X-Acto knife to cut out my shapes. I like to flip my foam piece on the back side to cut again so that way the foam piece comes right off. Now I'm taking that same piece and I'm going to trace and cut out four more pieces. Now that I have four rectangular pieces, I'm going to put these to the side and cut out three squares. I already had this piece on hand, but this piece is the exact same size as the other four rectangular pieces that you guys just seen me cut. I will be sure to list all measurements and all items used in this video down below in the description box. So now that I cut out these three squares, I'm going to cut out an additional three squares and then an additional six rectangular pieces. Now I'm using these two pieces to make the top of a triangle. Please note, this is a full foam board and I'm only cutting off the sad triangle pieces. I drew another line because the other one was not angled correctly. So I have 10 rectangular pieces and then I have six of these squares and then I also have two big somewhat of triangle shapes and I'm going to sand all the sides so that way all the sides are as smooth as possible. So I basically doubled all the pieces and for the rectangular pieces I made two additional pieces and now I'm just gluing them all together by twos. I'm pushing the pieces up against the wall so I can ensure that they are aligned properly. Just so you know, it would be better to glue these together first before sanding them so that way you can save yourself some time. Now I'm using this Crafter Square vinyl paper and the measurements are 12 by 48 in the color Glossy Brilliant. And I'm just going to use this vinyl paper to cover one side of all my pieces. I'm using a ruler to help me smooth out my vinyl paper. I'm using my scissors to cut the paper and that's okay if it gives off that rigid look because the edges will not be showing. If you don't want that look where it's dark in certain areas, do not overlap your paper. And I tried my best to be as neat as possible. Now I'm repeating the same exact steps for all my rectangular pieces. I decided to use my box cutter to cut the paper since it's quicker and easier to use. I know this is looking a bit of a mess, but I'm going to clean all of this up. Trust the process. To cut the excess, all I did was flip this piece over and use my box cutter. I have three pieces in total and I was just focused on covering the front sides, the back sides, and the sides. I purchased this bling wrap from Amazon, which I absolutely love, but if you wanted to keep it all Dollar Tree, you can simply use their bling wrap. And I'm just covering the very top and bottom of the front and back side of these shapes. This bling wrap is self-adhesive, but you can add glue if you choose to. Mm -hmm. 
So for this part, I'm just showing y'all that I flip my pieces over and I just use my box cutter to cut the excess vinyl paper off. I'm using my box cutter because my X-Acto knife is dull. I covered all my shapes on one side with this mint color except for the squares and now I'm flipping them over to add this pink glittery matte color. I'm completing the same exact steps for the back side as I did for the front side. Just so y'all know, if y'all are going to purchase this pink vinyl paper, you may want to wear gloves because the coloring do come off. And I noticed after about five minutes of applying this paper, there were a lot of bubbles, but I found it that you can smooth them out with your fingers. Now I'm using this vase to trace a small square and then I'm gonna cut it out. I know y'all wondering why I'm cutting it, but y'all will see why later on in the video. Once I get done with this one, I'ma cut out another square on a different piece on the opposite side. I'm lining the bling wrap up with the bottom edge so that way I can be able to fold the remainder of the bling wrap onto the front of my foam board. This is the bottom piece, this is the middle piece, and this is the top piece. And this piece right here is looking like this because I accidentally cut it and then I had to put it back together. This is the very top piece, which I will be covering the second piece the same exact way. Y'all see why I said it didn't matter if the edges were messed up? That's because I knew my bling wrap will fix all of that. These two pieces are for the sides and I'm just completing the same exact steps as I did for my top pieces. The only difference with this one is, is I'm making sure that I fold the bling wrap over onto the pink side instead of the mint side. Now for this piece, I'm gonna apply glue and then I'm gonna lay the bling wrap directly on top of my foam piece. My vinyl paper didn't fully cover this space, so I'm just adding a small strip and then I'm gonna apply glue and then my bling wrap and continue the process. Just so y'all know, when I overlap the mint vinyl paper, everything sticked, but when I overlap the pink vinyl paper, it did not. So do not overlay your pink vinyl paper because it will not stick. For my big piece, the pink side is the front side and the mint side is the back side. Now I'm taking my three rectangular pieces and I'm gonna glue them to my big piece. I'm making sure I hold my pieces into place until the glue dries a little bit. To hide the excess glue, I'm covering it up with a strip of bling wrap and then I'm gonna repeat the same steps for my other two pieces. But before I do that, I'm gluing one of my small square pieces right on top of my rectangular piece. The piece with the cutout on the right side goes here. I'm adding another small square piece and then I'm gonna add the piece with the cutout on the left side right on top of the square piece. I fully covered this last square piece since nothing will be on top of it. Now I'm gluing my sides on and I'm pressing down very firmly until the glue adheres. This is the other side.
This is the top left piece, and since this piece do not lay flat, I will have a small gap, but I'll show y'all what I did to cover that up. Now I'm adding the top right piece. To cover up those gaps, I'm just simply adding more bling wrap and then I'll add more bling wrap to any areas that I did not cover. Now I'm gluing all my wood block pieces in a stair-like pattern. Should have something that looks like this and this one has 17 wood blocks and this one has 18 and I'm covering both of them with my silver metallic spray paint that I purchased from Home Depot. Now I'm gluing two strips of this bling wrap right down the center of my staircase. I'm making sure I press the bling wrap in very firmly. Now I'm placing another strip of bling wrap around this LED light. Just so y'all know, I'm still able to switch out my batteries. Now I'm gluing the staircase with the 18 blocks down on this side, and then I'll glue the one with the 17 blocks up top on the other side. For this last step, I'm adding my push lights, so stay tuned for the final reveal. And just like that, I have this stunning glam dollhouse that's made out of Dollar Tree foam boards, y'all. I can't stop staring at it. I added four mirror tiles to hide the foam board sticker tab. This is the first floor, and we're going to move up to the second floor and then the third. I'm so loving this dollhouse. It's super gorgeous. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss my next upload.